breast cancer. It's the most commonly diagnosed type of cancer in women around the world. But breast cancer-related deaths in the U.S. have been declining since the 1990s. The major reason for the decline in breast cancer rates uh, in this country was when we uh, did the, the worldwide trial and looking at the risk of hormone replacement therapy in postmenopausal women. And when those studies came about and a lot of women stopped taking their hormone replacement therapy, we saw a tremendous decline in the, in, in the incidence of breast cancer. Researchers are now vigorously investigating new methods for treating the disease, which is not the same in all patients. There are two major categories for breast cancer. Uh, the most common variety is the ductal variety, which means that this is a cancer that started from the lining of the ducts of the breast tissue, and this represents over 80% of the breast cancers that we deal with. There is another 10% that is the invasive lobular variety, uh, which means it started from the milk-producing glands of the breast tissue. Within the two main categories are a variety of breast cancer subtypes. There is such a thing as the triple negative breast cancer that we deal with, which means that this is a cancer that is not sensitive to either estrogen, progesterone, or um, uh, one of the surface proteins that we see on cancer cells called HER2 nu. Those triple negative cancers have a tendency of being far more aggressive and much more lethal. There's also inflammatory breast cancer, which is a more rare type of cancer that involves uh, the, almost the entire breast and it almost looks like a bad infection. Your risk of getting breast cancer can be determined by several factors. There are certain subgroups that have a much higher risk for developing breast cancer, and mainly, you know, that has to do with familial risk. And I always like to say you have to choose your parents wisely because a lot of things that we have, you know, we kind of inherit from our parents. Once a diagnosis is made, treatment is determined on an individual basis. First and foremost, if we can, we need to have it surgically removed. Once that cancer is surgically excised, then we look at some of the other forms of treatment such as chemotherapy, hormone therapy, or radiation, or a combination of all of those factors. Unfortunately, most existing cancer drugs and treatments are not only killing cancer cells, they're killing healthy cells too. With radiation therapy, the main side effects are changes to the skin um, that are given during those radiation treatments uh, as it pertains to breast cancer uh, or affecting some of the other surrounding organs if we're giving radiation treatments for different types of um, uh, parts of the body. As far as chemotherapy is concerned, uh, the main side effects there are with nausea, vomiting, anemia, and, their, and therefore fatigue. But advancements in cancer treatment could spare healthy cells. Molecular targeted therapy uh, is a newer way that we're approaching the treatment of cancers, but looking down at the molecular level of uh, those uh, cancers. Uh, for instance, uh, for breast cancer, we have the HER2 new protein, which is exhibited on the surface of these cancer cells. Molecular therapy is having a tremendous impact on treatment. As we're getting down to that molecular level and are going to be able to potentially manipulate some of these genes, is to intervene much earlier and turn off certain genes or turn on certain other um, inhibitor genes that will allow us to prevent those cancers from ever forming. So rather than you know, treating after the fact, trying to prevent it would be the best thing.